for my side. Thank you very much. Good morning. Your Excellency, Prime Minister of Tuvalu, uh, Honorable Endele Sopoanga, Your Excellency, the Ambassador of the Republic of France, Mr. Michel Djokovic, Your Excellency, the High Commissioner of Tuvalu, Mr. Paulson Panapa, Honorable Ministers from the Government of Tuvalu, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Talofa, Bonjour, Bulovinaka, Namaste, Good Morning. It is indeed a great honor and with the greatest respect that I convey the greetings of the peoples and the government of Fiji. I extend a special and warm bulavinaka to His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Tuvalu and his Madame and his ministerial delegation and to His Excellency, the Ambassador of France on this historic occasion where we are here to attest the signing of the two codicils which will modify the agreements defining the maritime boundaries between the three governments of the Republic of France, Republic of Tuvalu, and the Republic of Fiji. Please allow me to contextualize today's milestone achievement by refreshing our memories with an equally significant chapter when Fiji and Tuvalu signed the Fiji-Tuvalu Maritime Boundary Treaty in October 2014, last year. After many years, of what we can now look back in retrospect and honestly acknowledge as diplomatic negotiation. This was followed by a trilateral meeting which convened in London in December 2014 between France, Tuvalu and Fiji. On behalf of the Fijian government, may I convey our sincere and belated gratitude for the warm invitation extended to Fiji then, which enabled members of the Fiji Maritime Affairs coordinating committee to dialogue and negotiate with the maritime boundaries, negotiators from the government of Tuvalu and France, and ultimately agree on a new type point which denotes the equal denominator that we share in our overlapping exclusive economic zones, or EEZ. As a declared friend to all and enemy to none, Fiji believes that it is in her interest that all maritime boundaries that she shares with her neighboring island states are determined and mutually agreed through respectful dialogue and peaceful negotiations. Like any other oceanic region of the global community, such as the Caribbean and the Mediterranean, the Pacific has to welcome these maritime boundaries dialogues as opportunities for constructive interaction amongst oceanic island states. In this way, border negotiation may be a challenge less pronounced in the landlocked states of the African, American, Asian, and European con continents where jurisdictions are relatively cut and dry. But whether oceanic or landlocked, the underlying recognition must be that global integration and enhanced international relations definitely begin at the border. Excellencies and distinguished guests, the signing ceremony today not only illustrates a successful negotiation in London, but more importantly conveys the core message that dialogue is always critical, particularly in maritime delimitation, where sensitive questions of state sovereignty, sovereign rights, and jurisdiction are always put into question. It is through dialogue and negotiation that our three countries can compellingly declare today that we have concluded highly technical and complex negotiations in accordance with the principles espoused under and with the spirit of the United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea, on the Law of the Sea, to which Fiji was the first signatory in 1982. Excellencies and distinguished guests, it would be amiss on my part if I do not acknowledge the contribution of the maritime negotiators who have quietly and tirelessly toiled behind the scenes, and who we can call those nameless and faceless individuals throughout these numerous years of negotiation. The Applied Geoscience and Technology Division of, or SOPAC of the Secretariat of the Pacific Community, the Pacific Island Forum Fisheries Agency, the Maritime Boundaries Negotiators of the Governments of Tuvalu and France, the Commonwealth Secretariat in London, 
Fiji's Maritime Affairs Coordinating Committee, including the Ministry of Lands and Mineral Resources, the Attorney General's Office, the Fiji Islands Maritime and Safety Administration, the Fiji Navy, and Fiji's very own Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, I reiterate my sentiments of a warm welcome and sincere congratulations to ourselves for today's milestone signing. Merci beaucoup. Thank you all very much. Ambassador, Roving Ambassador of Fiji to the Pacific Islands, on behalf of the government of Fiji, Your Excellency, the Ambassador of uh, Republic of France to Tuvalu, representing the government of France, uh, Honorable Ministers of uh, the government of Tuvalu, Excellencies, friends, Talofa, and I wish you a warm welcome to this very important occasion. As we have heard from Her Excellency the Ambassador of Fiji to the Pacific Islands, under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, our Pacific Islands have the sovereign right to delimitate their maritime zones. And this occasion will mark the exercising of that very right between the sovereign countries of uh, France, of course, representing Wallis and Futuna, of Fiji, and of course, Tuvalu. As a small island nation, with a mere 26 square kilometers in total land area, heavily reliant on the ocean, living and non-living resources within and surrounding the atoll nations in the Pacific Ocean, our maritime jurisdictional areas, in particular our EEZ, or commonly referred as the uh, otherwise exclusive economic zone, provides vital resources to the people, communities of Tuvalu, within that estimated total area of 800,000 square kilometers. With the signing of this maritime boundary agreement in a form of exchange of letters between Tuvalu and the French Republic, we shall enter into agreement <coughs> The recognition of that delimitation, which would also be followed and entered into force after the satisfaction of domestic legal procedures in various uh, jurisdictions, in our respective jurisdictions. I also wish to highlight that the similar process between Fiji was observed and concluded in October 2014. But at the same time, technical amendment to that uh, agreement has also been agreed uh, to be effected as well between Tuvalu and Fiji. I'm pleased to state that Tuvalu has now successfully concluded all of its maritime boundary negotiations and delimitation of shared boundaries with our neighboring countries, including the Republic of Kiribati, Fiji, and France. And uh, again concludes a process that has taken long, long, many, year, many long, long years in the make. Excellencies, given our la a small land area and indeed the increasing threat of sea level rise and climate change, which we believe are going to increase in the future. And it's already threatening the survival of my people in Tuvalu and many other small island uh, nations. 
my government has attached great significance and importance to the steps concluding in the delimitation of boundaries between uh, Tuvalu and our neighbors, as we are witnessing this morning, to ensure that our maritime boundaries are legally established and recognized, again to ensure full recognition of our sovereignty rights and claims now, but especially in the future, as an effective mechanism to address some of the most pressing issues with, which are threatening the very existence of our communities, our people, and of our national identity and statehood in the future. Excellencies, I hope you will recognize how important and significant this exercise to us, the people of Tuvalu. And, of course, with full recognition of the presidency of France over the upcoming Conference of the Parties number 21 to the UNFCCC, the climate change, I take heart that we are signing at this moment just on the eve of the world coming to Paris to try to conclude a legally binding agreement. And I would certainly ask our friend Ambassador of France, present here, who just returned from Tuvalu yesterday, to pass on the message of how unique, vulnerable Tuvalu is. I, I learned that he went to, uh, for a picnic on one of the small islands, islets of Funafuti, I visit our, our brother's place in uh, Mulitipala, and I, I wish you could pass. I ask that you pass on that message to President of France to try his best. Failure is not an option for the world on climate change. And Ambassador, please kindly convey that message to your leaders in Paris. To pass the message that the water is already flapping, at the doorstep of every Tuvaluan house and every Ikiribasi house and all the very low-lying islands. Water is already lapping at the doorsteps of those countries. And the world will fail humankind, humanity, if COP21 should focus on saving economies rather than saving people who are already threatened by lapping waters at their doorsteps. Finalizing our maritime boundaries also provides us an effective management tool and tools for improving governance of our valuable ocean resources. I wish to acknowledge the country teams from all countries, France, Fiji, and of course my own Tuval, who were involved directly in the technical and legal negotiations. I think they deserve our praise and our congratulations. In Tuvalu, particularly the Department of Lands and Survey, under the Ministry of Natural Resources, our Attorney General's Office, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Department of Police and Surveillance, Department of Marine, and other nat national stakeholders. To those, I offer my personal heartfelt congratulations. I also express my appreciation to the consortium of partners from the region and from abroad who have provided technical support to our teams. The Geoscience Division of the Secretariat of the Pacific Community, SBC, the Pacific Islands Forum Fisheries Agency, FFA, Geoscience Australia, the Australian Attorney General's uh, Department, University of Sydney, the Commonwealth Secretariat, and of course UNEP, Greet Arendal for all their invaluable support to them. I offer 
on behalf of the government people of Tuval, our heartfelt thanks. Given the priority again that, is, that pray, uh, we place on ocean resources, today's signing uh, event will, with France and other uh, parties, notably uh, Fiji, demonstrates the successful spirit of cooperation and commitment uh, for all those countries. Before I finish, I want to acknowledge our thanks to the government of Fiji, uh, uh, <clears throat> through Ambassador Lithia for their very kind arrangements um, putting together this occasion in logistics and also in coordination. Um, but thank you very much, Ambassador. Kindly convey this to your government. Once again, to every one of us here, our thanks and appreciation for your support and for being with us in this very important occasion. Fab Tailasi, Messi Puku, Bula Vinaka, Minangwale, Tuvalu Mondiatu, Fab Tail. Your Excellency, Prime Minister Honorable Enelis Ponga, Your Excellency, Madam Ambassador, Mrs. Litia Mawe, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, I'm greatly honored to be here today for the signing ceremony of this exchange of letters that constitutes an agreement under international law concerning the delimitation of maritime boundaries between France, representing Wallis and Futuna, and Tuvalu on the one hand, and France and Fiji on the other hand. Some people might be surprised to see France signing a border agreement with Tuvalu and Fiji. I would like to underline that France has a place and a role to play in the South Pacific. More than half a million French citizens are Pacific Islanders, whether they are living in New Caledonia, in French Polynesia, or in Wallis and Futuna. The agreement we are signing today is based on a very constructive and complex technical discussions which took place in particular last December in London between the legal experts of our three delegations under the care of the Secretariat General of the Commonwealth and according, of course, uh, to the provisions of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. <coughs> A new and well-defined maritime delimitation of 563 kilometers long has been agreed between France for the island of Walsan Futuna and Tuvalu. This is a big achievement. Another new delimitation line has been determined more on an updated uh, basis between France and Fiji, taking into a, account the World Geodetic Reference System 1984. These lines meet in a new three junction point or ending point successfully agreed by France, Tuvalu and Fiji. France shares common borders with 35 countries worldwide on all five continents, making it the country with the highest number of borders in the world. In the Pacific alone, France shares borders with 11 countries. This is due to historical reasons, as well as to the willingness of the people of these overseas territories to maintain their very old bonds with the French Republic through their democratic institutions. In addition, I would like to stress that France does not make any distinction between its citizens wherever they live. French citizenship is the same for all, regardless of ethnic origin or religious beliefs. Prime Minister, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the existence of borders is one of the components that define a state. Its precise determination is fundamental. This is important because the ocean is a major source of wealth, as Your Excellency Prime Minister mentioned. Both in the sea or on the seabed, it is a source of life 
especially for the island states. The ocean needs a delicate balance, and its potential riches may provoke unwelcome envy. The ocean needs to be prevented from various trafficking from developing within these vast maritime spaces. And we need to avoid any gray zone that would be under no one's responsibility. The documents we are signing today represent not only an act of, of sovereignty, but also, hopefully, a strong will to preserve the ocean resources from overexploitation and illegal trafficking, and also a move towards a sustainable exploitation of its natural resources. Thank you for the Fijian authorities for all these organizational aspects and thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. <laughs>